think it's so important for people to remember that they're the creators of their lives instead of the victim of their lives, right? Mm -hmm. So the victim is saying, I'm feeling this way because that person or that circumstance or I don't have any money is causing me to feel this way. This is my relationship with money. What that really means is I'm using my lack to... Well, I think we've been programmed quite a bit uh, in, with our relationship with money. And we have a relationship with everything known in our environment. You have a relationship, a neurological network in your brain to, for your parents, for your cell phone, for your computer, where you live, where you've lived in the past, what you're going to do tomorrow. That for the most part, the brain is a reflection of everything that we know, right? So along with that is our relationship with money. And I, mm -hmm. I feel like I have a really good relationship with money because I work on having a really good relationship with everything in my life. Right? Did you always have a good relationship with money? I think so. I think yeah. so. I've never really lived in lack. That just wasn't part of it. Even when I went to college and I had to take out student loans and stuff, I always figured out a way to always be a little bit ahead of the curve. And so, so let's back up and just look at how people uh, form beliefs. Because yes. most beliefs um, are created from past experiences, right? So uh, children, uh, when they're uh, in their early ages, their brain waves are very slow. Like their brain waves are in alpha uh, when they're like 7 to 12. They're in theta when they're like 2 to 6 years old. And, and they're in delta like when they're, when they're you know, newborn to 2 years old. And so... These brainwave states uh, are states that were really suggestible to information. So when we hear information, we believe it. And we accept it, we believe it, we surrender to it as if it's the truth without analyzing it because there's no analytical facilities yet. Right. The, ana the analytical mind starts around 12 or so, 7 to 12, and that analytical mind is actually what creates a barrier between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. So, so before 12, roughly, what we see how we model our parents' behavior, it's what all they say to us. It's all being programmed subconsciously, right? And, wow. and so, so that's really, really important because if you heard money is the root of all evil, uh, money is bad, uh, only certain people are allowed to make money. You have to work hard to make money. Mm -hmm. This is how you got to do it. And that becomes the foundation subconsciously. Like, let's like write, uh, recording an audio file. You just keep recording that audio file, it becomes a subconscious program, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of people have a relationship with money based on either what they've been told or what they've experienced in their outer environment, right? So, so then we gain information from our environment and the stronger the emotion we feel from experiences in our lives, the more altered we feel inside of us, the more the brain freezes a frame and takes a picture. And that snapshot is called the memory. So, Based on an emotion. Based on an emotion. The emotion alters our internal state. So you're going along as Lewis feeling really good. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you have this trauma, you have this crisis, you have this shock. And all of a sudden you have this dramatic change in your internal state and your senses get heightened. And then you freeze the frame and you associate this internal state with whatever it is that's causing it, right? And that's how we create long-term memories, right? So, are, are painful memories more uh, powerful or beautiful memories more powerful? Think about people who have relationships with money, right, from the past. All beliefs are based on past experiences. So you have an experience where you lose money, you have an experience where uh, money's taken away from you, you have an experience where you don't have enough, you're living in a place where there's not enough money or a family that's not enough money, then the emotion that most people are living by on a moment-to-moment -moment basis is lack. Like, I'm in lack of having something that I want, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, there's nothing wrong with that because the experience changes your emotional state. You freeze the frame, you take a picture. The problem is that's hardware. So we think neurologically within the circuits of that past experience yes. and we feel chemically within the boundaries of that emotion, which would say, for example, be lack, right? If you can teach people to do the exact opposite, go from putting all of their attention on everything physical and material in the world of separation, and instead of narrowing their focus on something material, ask them to broaden their focus and put it on nothing. Now, I know that sounds kind of crazy, but when you put your attention on space and you divert your attention, 
the act of sensing without thinking actually starts to slow the brain waves down. Mm -hmm. Not only slow it down, but all of a sudden cause the brain to start re reintegrating, starts to synchronize, right? And so you see different compartments of the brain that were firing out of order start to mm -hmm. resonate. They start to communicate. They're, 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 they're all of a sudden synchronizing. And what sinks in the brain kind of links in the brain. Mm -hmm. So when a person has their whole entire brain firing in rhythm, that's a very strong signal that you can send out into the field. So if when you, that signal is strong in that position, what can you create from that space? Okay, so, but that's only one element. Okay. So then the clear intention tends to be a very important element that we have to have to get down. And the more coherent the brain, the more clear the signal for that intention. So with intention and attention, we could actually make thought more real than anything else. Now, what is that? Mm. You're saying, what would it be like to be wealthy? What would it be like to be abundant? What would it be like to have all my needs met? What would it be like to have more than I need? Mm -hmm. What would I do if I had everything I ever wanted? The answer always is the same. You start giving stuff away. Because if an abundant person is truly right. abundant, why would they hold on? They would say, there's, I'm not in lack. There's more for everybody, okay? Turns out, though, that the signal sent out isn't enough. You gotta have to draw the experience back to you. And so you send the signal out to, you know, it's coherent brain, financial freedom, whatever abundance, that is. all these different right, things. Right, 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 right. Whatever that is for you. Whatever so that is for you. You're putting that out there with right. your signal the, with the intention and the attention. Right. And then how do you draw okay. it so, to so you? Now, so, so in the physical world, right. the in the physical world, world you got to go get it. <laughs> you got to do something. This is the plane of demonstration. You got to go get it. And when you, you're in lack until it occurs, right? Mm -hmm. But, so, but I'm hearing you say there's a way to not chase but attract. All right, so if you're creating from the field instead of from matter, right, there's a very strong possibility that you'll shorten the distance between the thought of what you want and the experience of having it. And when there's a vibrational match between your energy and that future that you want to experience, now if you're creating from the field, you actually don't go anywhere to get it. Mm. You actually draw it to you. Mm. So the, here comes the synchronicities, the serendipities, the coincidences, yes. the opportunities, and they come out of nowhere. And you, you say, I don't understand. I, I, I didn't do anything. Well, you changed your energy. And, and so then the, the other element is a coherent heart, right? Mm -hmm. And the heart has a magnetic signature. And the magnetic signature is what draws reality to us, right? So you combine that clear intention with a coherent brain. Now here's the key. This takes practice. Yes. Because the person who's living in lack is usually unworthy, is usually insecure, is usually in their past, they're usually frustrated, they're usually impatient, they're usually resentful because nothing's changing out there because it's taking too long. Well, that's mm. everything takes a lot of time when you do matter to matter, right? So then if you teach them, okay, we know all about that. We know the story behind yeah, that. We know what your, your parents said, told yeah. you about money, all that other, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But now let's do something that would be really cool. Let's, let's write down the feelings of how you would feel if that future happened and you're going to have to feel that feeling before it occurs. So now, okay, what does a, an abundant person feel? Pretty much free, a lot of free, freedom. Peace, peace, excited, joyful. Uh, uh, um, in love with life, mm -hmm. grateful to be alive, abundant. Okay, now. Let's practice mm -hmm. feeling those. Turns out when you're feeling those other emotions like resentment and impatience and frustration, you're stepping on the gas pedal, you're turning on the sympathetic nervous system, and you're stepping on the brake. At which the same is, time. At the same time, which is oh. you're angry, you're frustrated, but the fight or flight nervous system says run, fight, or hide, and you're sitting in a Zoom meeting and you're neck is pulsating is because the heart is beating against the closed system, right? You're not, you're not using it in an adaptive way. So mm. the heart starts firing out of order. It starts firing incoherently and incoherent waves cancel each other out. It's called destructive interference and then we stop trusting our future. Energy leaves the heart. Energy leaves the brain, energy leaves the heart. You can't get in touch with the feeling of your future because in survival, which those are hormones of stress, all those emotions. In survival, it's not a time to create, right? It's time to run, fight, and hide. Okay, so we gotta lay down the very thing we used our whole life to get what we want. 
a habit of doing it that way for something greater to occur. Okay. And what happens if we create, try to create from survival emotions? It just takes a long time. And you just, you, you'll just force it. Little, yeah. spit, little steps at a time. You'll the force world. it. Yeah. You'll, you'll force it. You'll fight for it. You'll compete for it. And you'll manipulate. You'll cheat. You'll lie. Uh, you'll do anything to get what you want because that's what matter does when it's trying to change matter. And everybody's, everybody's playing that game, right? Everybody's trying to c accumulate the most amount of things. Right. Okay, so that's what abundance means to certain people. Get as many things as you can. Okay. You want that? Not a problem. But let's learn the formula of how to create, right? Yes. So then, So then you'd have to feel those emotions before the experience occurred. And if you understood that you could dissociate all of your attention from this three-dimensional reality and have no attention on anything known and understand it's the field that creates matter, mm. not matter that emits the field. And if you could get to that place and change your energy with a clear intention and elevated emotion, your heart starts beating in this beautiful rhythm like a drum. We've measured it so many times. And when that occurs, the next thing that happens, the heart informs the brain it's safe to create now. So the person Gosh. relaxes into the present moment. And then we see this, like if you took a big sheet, you know, and a blanket and you went like that, the energy of the heart actually informs the brain to move into these beautiful, elegant states of alpha brainwave patterns, mm. coherent alpha. And that's saying, what's the next dream? What is it, the next, what's the next opportunity you want to experience? That's a state of creation. So now you have a Wi-Fi signal. You got a coherent brain, that's a directive, that's a signal out, and you got this coherent heart, that's what draws it to us, right? You combine those two, and if there's a vibrational match between your energy and that potential in the quantum field, and you're feeling abundant, and whatever your brain associates with being abundant, that's your call. That's what the creative process is. This is the creative center. The brain, the frontal lobe, actually says, what would it be like to be creative or, or abundant? If you're doing it properly then, what would be the outcome? The experiment of being abundant would be that you would have to feel that feeling. It's so good at doing it with your eyes closed. Mm -hmm. You gotta do it with your eyes open. Now why? <laughs> because if you're feeling the feelings of your emotions, of your future, you're no longer looking for them. Because you you're in the future now. Your, your body is so objective that it's believing it's living in that reality yes. where you are abundant. And as long as you feel that emotion, you're not separate from it any longer. You're no longer in lack. You're no longer looking for it to occur, occur. Say, why hasn't it happened yet? If you're feeling abundant, why would you look? Right? We would, right. You wouldn't, so, so, so then our job then is to be able to maintain that modified state of mind and body. So, okay. So does that mean like you should check your bank account tomorrow and see if there's a half a million dollars in it? No. You keep tuning into that potential, and then here come the synchronicities. Yes. What's that? That's feedback in your environment. It's the universe saying, hey, Lewis, whatever you're doing, all of a sudden, <laughs> we are starting to create, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's so important for people to remember that they're the creators of their lives instead of the victim of their lives, mm -hmm. right? So the victim is saying, I'm feeling this way because that person or that circumstance or I don't have any money is causing me to feel this way. That's my relationship with money. What that really means is I'm using my lack to reaffirm my dependency, my addiction, my conditioning. That's my relationship with money is that I put my attention on money because I don't have it. Mm -hmm. So the relationship with money is of course built on lack. And so when they don't have it, they feel bad. And what they're really saying is my outer environment, my reality is actually controlling the way I feel and the way I think. So Lewis, why are you in a good mood today? Things are going good. Why in a bad mood? Things are going bad today. So. This unconscious program of victimization is saying that, that, that we're, we're allowing our environment to influence the way we feel and the way we think. Isn't that, isn't that what victimization is? And, and the stronger the emotion we have to our lack, the more we put our attention on the fact that we don't have it, right? Yes. So then the person has forgotten that they're creating reality because what they're creating is lack. And they're creating more of it. And then they try harder and they force harder and they control more. And they're more, more exhausted and, and their more, body's tired. And, and they're, they're breaking mind. down. And, right. So, so the experiment then is let's try it another way. Let's create from the field instead of from matter. 
get a coherent heart, get a coherent brain, relax in the heart and energy moves right in the brain. We've measured this a thousand times and all of a sudden the person moves into these beautiful, elegant brainwave states where they're super creative, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the longer you're conscious of that energy, the more you draw that future to you. So then what does the synchronicity mean? It means whatever you're doing inside of you is producing that effect outside of you. Pay attention to what you did Keep doing and do more it again. Yeah. So generate a little bit more abundance. Just uh -huh. do it for an experiment. Now, when the synchronicity happens, do you think you feel suffering or do you think you feel a little excitement? You feel inspired, right? Mm -hmm. So then that synchronicity is saying, use this energy, use this feeling. It should be easier for you to feel this now and go back and do it again. Mm -hmm. Keep the experiment going. Then here comes the promotion. Here comes the, here comes the email. Here mm -hmm. comes the person you meet at the right time, yes. right? Whoa, we have something happening here. And then that, that becomes the momentum, right? So then we generate abundance. That's, that's how we do it. And the relationship... It doesn't just happen by accident. We generate it. We generate abundance, right? So then if you have an hour meditation where you're tuning into your abundant future, but then you're spending the other 15 hours a day in lack, don't expect anything to change. You defaulted. Mm -hmm. You're back to the old energy. And if you say it's that person or that circumstance or that bank account, I'm going to say you're back to the unconscious program of being a victim, right? Mm -hmm. so, then, so, then, so then let's go a step further. If your personality creates your personal reality, and it does, and your personality is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you feel, then the present personality who's listening to this podcast has created the present personal reality called their life. Nothing big there. Which means if you want to change your personal reality, you're going to have to change your personality. Right. Nothing changes in your life until you change, right? Mm -hmm. So then... In this video, I want to share some of the big ideas and key learnings from my recent study of Dr. Joe Dispenza. Dr. Dispenza is a world-renowned author, speaker, and expert on human consciousness and potential. His central message is that we have much more control over the outcomes in our lives than we realized. The power of beliefs, a foundational concept from Dr. Dispenza, is that our beliefs drive our realities. Beliefs are thoughts wired into our brains through repetition and emotion. The boundaries of our beliefs are the emotions associated with those beliefs. For example, if you believe money is scarce, you likely have strong emotions of lack, guilt, or anxiety when it comes to money and financial topics. In order to change a limiting belief, Dr. Dispenza says, you need to make a firm decision to change with strong intention and emotion. This sets up a new circuitry in your brain and nervous system. The key is that the emotion of your decision must have more energy and amplitude than your current emotional patterns. It has to shake you out of the familiar feelings and habits. Manifesting versus creating. There is a crucial difference between trying to manifest abundance versus truly creating it. When we attempt to manifest, we are coming from a place of lack and trying to attract something external to fill that void. True creation happens when we shift our internal state first, when we cultivate the feelings and energy of what we want to create. This is the quantum field, generating outcomes from the invisible realm of energy and emotion rather than purely physical effort, practices for creation. So how can we master this process of creation? Dr. Dispenza offers specific techniques for embodying the energy of what you want to create. It starts by clearly defining your intention. Exactly what do you want to create or experience? Next, you vividly imagine what it feels like to already have manifested that outcome. Here, you tap into emotions like excitement, freedom, gratitude, and awe. The goal is to immerse your nervous system into those feelings. You are signaling the future emotional state ahead of the physical experience. Finally, you let go of the need or attachment around when and how it unfolds. From that spacious state of wholeness, inspired ideas and synchronistic connections emerge to materialize your creation. But it rarely happens as a direct transaction of effort reward that we are conditioned to expect. The central practice here is being able to return to coherent emotional states independent of external circumstances. It's about redirecting your focus from separation to unity. This builds your personal power, the immense energy available when you are aligned internally. I hope you enjoyed this brief snapshot 
of some potent concepts from Dr. Joe Dispenza. The through line is that we can learn and practice how to shape our inner world, which then shapes our outer experience of reality. When we master our state of being, we master our lives. Feel free to share any reflections or reactions to these ideas in the comments.